We thank you, Lord God, that you have opened their ears to hear your spirit, telling them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they are a unique creation of your hand. Lord, help all of them to find their identity in you, God. Now, Lord, as we uh, just continue in your word, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to tarry, that you will continue to speak to us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We can bring the house lights up. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we will be anchored in Zechariah, the third chapter. Zechariah chapter three. Amen. My message today is specifically with our young people in mind. As I have looked in the news and the social media, uh, I am challenged by the extent to which our young people are targets. Now, I was aware uh, that many of them are targets because of things that they're involved in on the streets and those types of things. But our young people have become increasingly targets even of our justice system. Somebody created this picture. All of these young people killed by the police. Tamar Rice, yes. Michael Brown, yes. all of these, many young men, some young women, to the extent that some weeks ago, the Huffington Post ran uh, a front page uh, article, if you will. Oh, yeah. It was entitled, How to Get Away with Murder. And so as parents, as we have seen the hazards to our young people, it has caused us to, uh, to change the way we instruct our kids. That's right. Uh, we've told our kids when you come uh, uh, to, to figures of authority to make sure you're respectful, uh, to make sure you do. Uh, but it seems as if every time we give a new instruction, Something else happens that seems to color outside of the lines of what we thought was possible or ethical. And so it's a challenge. But, but for, for me, most of us have believed that if we can just well instruct, if you will, our young men that it's all right. But, 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 but last week, last week there was a, another story that came uh, uh, through the media, if you will. And for me, it was the most challenging of all. Her name was Sandra Bland. And, and, and through all of the challenges that we've seen, this one seemed to be different. Uh, this time it wasn't a young man, but it was a, a young woman. She had matriculated through Prairie View A&M University. She had attained her degree. Uh, she was educated. She was traveling from Chicago, Illinois, um, back to her alma mater to, to start a brand new job there. It, it appears that she was following all of the rules of the road. Huh? Uh, she knew who she was, as the ladies just told us. She knew what her rights were. But the story says uh, that the officer got behind her, and, and in an attempt to move out of his way, she changed lanes without signaling. That's right. That's right. To which she was pulled over, written a ticket. And just about the time when she was about to be let go, the officer, uh, the story says, recognized that she was slightly irritated. That's right. uh, at that time, she expressed herself. She told him why, and he told her to put out her cigarette, and she 
she let him know that I, I'm in my own vehicle and I have every right to smoke in my vehicle. And it was at that point that the situation escalated. escalated. Told her, get out of her vehicle. And nobody knows the full extent of what happened uh, after that. But as the headlines told us, three days later, she was dead. Our message for today is entitled, No More Sandras. And again, I'm speaking specifically to our young people. This, this story, this story, y'all, it, it bothered me because, because I, I didn't know how to respond to this one. I didn't know what it is that I should tell my children in response to this story. I, 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 you tell them to follow the rules, and yet that seemed to be what happened. We want our children to know their rights and, and to appropriately express themselves, and, and that seemed uh, to have happened. Uh, this one, y'all, it, it, it messed me up. So as I thought about the story, I asked myself, what lessons can we learn? What lessons can we teach our children, uh, not only in navigating this life, uh, but also in preparation for uh, the life to come? No more, no more, no more Sandras. As I looked at the story, the thing hit me that that the scenario that happened to Sandra Bland is a scenario uh, uh, that the enemy has been using for quite a while. As I reflected on the story, the realization hit me, really, folks, that we really cannot fully protect our children. And here's, here's what I mean by that. We can instruct them. We can teach them. And yet there is an extent to which they are opened uh, uh, to the world, but they are also under the covering of God and God himself. We, we can't protect our children. Travel with me to Zechariah chapter 3 and you'll see why I say it's difficult for the, us to protect them in all scenarios and in all situations. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible says, and he showed me Joshua. He showed me who? Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing uh, uh, at his right to resist him. Huh? Uh, the Bible says, in fact, let me give you the scenario here. We are just after the Babylonian exile, uh, around 500 BC. Uh, um, they are returning to Jerusalem, and it is God's purpose for them to rebuild the temple. But the enemies are coming against them, and the book of Zechariah, uh, and his contemporary Haggai, the word of God is encouraging them to continue to do that which God has called them to do, even in the light of the enemies that are coming against them. In Zechariah chapter 3, the Bible says that the high priest Joshua is standing before the angel of the Lord, and look who's standing next to him. Huh? Satan is standing. I, 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 notice where Satan is standing. Satan is standing on his right hand. What you are seeing here is a court scene, if you will. And Satan's position on his right hand is in the role of a prosecutor. Huh? Number one, the, the first reason why we cannot fully protect our kids is because there is an adversary that is after them. Huh? Joshua is the high priest. He is, he is attempting to perform like God has called him to, but, 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 but Satan is hot on his heels. And he is there to, to prosecute uh, and to persecute, if you will, Joshua. The thing that bothered me about this story is it seemed as if until her encounter with the officer, 
She was doing exactly what the law called for her to do. But somehow she was perceived as having uh, 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 as having either committed some crime and so uh, uh, the officer uh, came against her, if you will. Right. There is an enemy that is after our children who is more powerful than us. And we have to realize it. In fact, the Bible says, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober, huh? Uh, In fact, this almost sounds like defensive driving language, and yet it fits for all of life. Be sober and be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, young people, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There's an adversary that is after every one of us and unless god himself protects us we would be his prey but watch this watch this here's the other thing ah the the second reason why we cannot fully be protected if you will is because somehow somewhere we guilty joshua is the high priest and the bible says that he was brought before the angel of the Lord and he was wearing spotless duds. Did anybody hear the scripture read? The Bible says he is standing before the angel of the Lord and he's wearing what? He's wearing filthy rags. He's wearing filthy garments. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Satan brings him and he brings him and he's wearing filthy rags and Satan is ready to prosecute. What does Joshua say in his own defense? The challenging thing about the story that we're talking about today is the lady actually did change lanes without signal. That's right. Right. So that is an offense for which she could be ticketed. Mm -hmm. The officer actually told her to get out of the car which she didn't do. And so uh, she was, uh, you know, in violation of his command. In other words, although the scenario that we see is full of injustice, the truth of the matter is, is Sandra Bland wasn't completely innocent. And the challenge for our children is, number one, they have an enemy, and number two, they carry our genes in them, which means they ain't completely innocent as well, huh? That's right, that's right. One of the reasons, y'all, y'all, y'all don't hear me, one of the reasons why we fight so hard is many times when we have disciplined our children, in essence, what we are trying to do at times is we're trying to beat the us out of them, huh? Uh, because we see our characters come out in them, and, and we know it's going to be a problem because it was a problem for us. Uh, 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 and we want to send them out into the world before they take that same character or characteristic, but we can't beat it out of them. There's an enemy after them, and they go out flawed. Joshua is standing, he's standing for the Lord, and he has an enemy against him. He's got issues, he's got flaws, he's got shortcomings. Huh? The question is, in such a scenario, how is Joshua to stand? In such a scenario, how is it that our children can be able to stand and be able to make it. Ah, and the answer is, but God. Huh? Zechariah chapter 3, the Bible says, verse 4, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying what? Take away. Saying, take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. What I'm saying is, even though our kids like Joshua have two strikes against them and a fastball is coming down their lane, 
God said for Joshua, and he says to our children, not so. But the question is, how can they make it if God is not on their side? An enemy who was stronger than Joshua was coming against him. Joshua uh, 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 had filthy garments. He was sinful. He should have been subject to the judgment of God. And if it had not been for the Lord on his side, he couldn't have made it. And what our young people need to realize is we start this thing out. We start out with two strikes against us. Young people, your smarts, they're not going to get you through life, huh? Uh, your, your family, not the, your high school won't get you through life. Your recommendations won't get you through life unless the Lord is on your side. Not going to make it. But here's the thing. We're not going to be long today. Here's the thing that challenged me about the Sandra Bland story. All right. In my eyes, was the officer looking for a, a criminal or victim? Yeah. Was she guilty in some way? Yeah. Hear me on this. But none of that, none of that should have ended up with her being dead. Amen. 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 Three days later. Mm. You look at the story and you say, I, I, I understand there was an officer that was, and it's not whatever, but but why, why did she end up dead three days later? They say that they have they have looked at everything and, yeah. and that her injuries, are, it's hard to believe, but they say her injuries are consistent with mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. What that tells me, if it is in fact true, is that with everything that happened to her, that there came a point where she recognized and realized that I, I, I cannot go any further. Mm -hmm. And so they say that she she grabbed, I believe, some trash bags and she 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 hung herself in her jail cell. And I thought to myself, if 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 this story had not had ended in death, nobody would have ever heard of Sandra Blaine. The great tragedy of uh, the great tragedy in this story here is that it appears that Sandra took herself out of the fight. If, if, if that hadn't happened, we, we, we might not have ever heard. Sandra took herself out of the battle. That, that's the great tragedy here, that although she was educated, although she was articulate, although she had a brand new job and a bright future, somehow the circumstances and the future to her at some point appeared to be so bad that, 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 that it did not appear worth it to step into what her bright future indicated was for her. And so she took herself out of the fight. One of the great challenges that I see for many of our young people, in fact, most of them, can I be real? Most of our children do not fail in life because they were killed by an officer's bullet. Oh, okay. Most of our children do not fail in life because uh, 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 somebody hit them over the head and, uh, and injured them to the extent that they no longer can be productive. Huh? Watch it. Most of our children fail in life because at some point they took themselves out of the fight. Huh? 
Many of our kids sit uneducated on the streets, not because they were suspended out of school such that they couldn't come back, but one day they woke up and said, I ain't going no more. They woke up and said, I refuse to try any longer. They wake up and say, I'm no longer going to put my best foot forward. And so they become statistics, not because a bullet hit them, not because they were persecuted or prosecuted, but because they took themselves out of the fight. What would have happened in Zechariah chapter 3 if Zechariah said the devil is against me and I'm already guilty? I might as well just climb to a high mountain in Jerusalem and just jump off. He would have never seen the salvation of God. But because Zechariah stood there and waited for the salvation of God, uh, he that had promised to be faithful to him continued to be faithful. And so, yes, I'm troubled by Trayvon and I'm troubled by Mike Brown. But the biggest hazard I see for our children is not that somebody's going to come and get you, but that you take yourself out of the battle of life. You take yourself out of the struggle for greater, out of the struggle for richer or deeper. You take yourself and put yourself in a position where you no longer are moving forward. And so when I say no more Sandras, I don't believe in any way that I have a means to stop the police officers from pulling somebody over. I cannot prevent the syndrome in this country of driving while black, driving while young, driving while just a little bit crazy. Uh, 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 because you ain't got much sense yet. But the thing I think we can prevent is prevent our young people from believing that life is hopeless and taking themselves out of the fight. Okay. 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 <sighs> look at look at it, look at it, look at it. Wow. Often the okay. devil is powerless to destroy you, young people but he causes you to destroy yourself. Much of the carnage of young lives that we witness is not the enemy's activity. It's our kids' activity and things they have done to themselves. That, that, that enemy read about is a roaring lion, huh? And although there is a roaring lion, there's still a word that says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When the enemy tries to take you out like he does every day, God lifts up a standard. But if you decide to quit, if you decide to swallow the pills, to jump off the cliff, the devil didn't do that, that's you. The enemy convinces our young people to do to themselves what he is powerless and prevented from doing to them. My message, my message to our young people to make sure there are no more Sandras. Y'all don't quit. You got to make up in your mind. I'm never going to give up. They call me ugly. I ain't never going to give up. They say my hair is not. I'm going to keep pulling the comb through it until my hair is pure. They say I'm not too small. I'm never going to quit going to class. It don't look like I'm going to keep on going. Don't take yourself out of the battle. If somebody else takes you out, that's up to them. But don't take yourself out of the battle. Don't quit. Don't stop pushing. Don't stop going because most of our failure is not what other people do to us. It's what we do to our I'm done. I'm done. Isaiah chapter 40. Turn there with me. Isaiah chapter 40. 
Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Here's the promise of God. Isaiah chapter 40. I start in verse 28. I love it. Begin to play that song softly. We're going to get there in a second. In chapter 40, verse 28, no more Sandra's, folks. The text says, Hast thou not known, Lamar? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the earth, he fainteth not, he is neither weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, uh -huh. uh, and to them uh, 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 that have no might, he increases strength. Oh, young folk, he's coming down your aisle in verse 30. For it says, even the youth shall faint huh, and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But the question, God, is if the young people get faint and if the, the young men fall, should they just quit? Should they just stay down there? Should they just give up? No, said the word of God. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's even young folk. For the Bible says they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Bible says, young folk, even y'all get tired sometimes. Even y'all want to give up sometimes. Even y'all, young folk, want to take the towel and throw in the towel. But God says, but I will renew your strength, young people, if you can just learn to wait on me. See, what you've got to understand what you've got to understand is, young people, God created you to soar. But if you can't fly, it says you can run. And if you can't run, then you can walk. But if you're too tired to walk, you need to do like Joshua did in Zechariah chapter 3 and stand there even though the enemy is coming against you. Stand there even though your garments are filthy. Stand there even though you know you're about to hear a verdict that says guilty. Stand there and wait. I say wait on the salvation of the Lord because if you can just wait on Jesus and wait for your deliverance and not take your own self out of the game, you can somehow make it. Not because you're good enough, bad enough, and doggone it, people like you, but because there is a God in heaven who chose you before the foundation of the world to make sure that you are a success in him. So fly if you can, run if you can, walk if you can, but if you can't do nothing else, Brashaw, just stand.
after you've done all you can. 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 After you've gone through the hurt. After you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. You prayed and cried. After you prayed and cried. All you can. Oh, after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. You just stand. I need all of my young people to stand to your feet. Just stand. You just stand. Young people, young people, young people, listen to me. This is a very practical word. You need to develop in your life a never stop, don't give up ever attitude. Don't quit. Don't ever stop pushing. Stop trying. Stop striving. Because what I know is God, the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The blessings of God plus your can-do attitude can take you anywhere God has for you to go. Will you fall down? Yeah. Even the Bible says the righteous man falls seven times. Joshua the high priest stood there filthy, ushered into the court by the enemy. But he just stood there. Waiting for the salvation and the deliverance of God. There, there's some old folk who need this word, huh? The folk who, 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 who just tired. But the, the wonderful thing about the word of God is th there's something powerful about standing for God. When you think about it, it doesn't make sense that, that uh, but the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It, it's okay to take a little break. It's okay to lean on something or somebody for a bit. Just don't quit. You're going to be taken out. Let somebody take you out. Don't take yourself out. But after you've done all you can, stay there. And after you've done all you can, after you've done all you can, say that again. And after you've done all you can, after you've done, then what do you do, young people? You just you just stand. everybody to grab somebody's hand. I need you to reach across the aisle. Reach across the aisle. I need everybody to grab somebody's hand. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. 